Our lesson for today is all about finding the probability of simple event. So, at the end of this lesson, you are expected to first determine the probability of simple, simple event. Two, solve practical problems involving probability of simple events. And last, apply it in a real life situation. Now, let's proceed. In contemporary times, we are experiencing a global health problem. We are all at risk at catching diseases. Hence, health professionals issued protocols. It is upon us to follow and be 100% safe or 100% exposed to germs and viruses. Every day, we always encounter events that are equally to occur. Will it rain or the sun will shine? Will there be a heavy traffic or smooth travel? Probability took a big part in our decisions based on the changes that are likely to happen. Now, let's, ident or let's define the following terms. We have the probability. This is the extent to which an event is likely to occur. Measured by the ratio of favorable cases to the whole number of cases possible. Next, we have the probability experiment. It is a chance process that leads to a well-defined result called an outcome. Next, outcome. It is the result of a single trial of an experiment. And the last, we have the sample space. It is the set of all the possible outcomes or sample points. We have the probability of simple events. The probability of simple events is finding the probability of a single event occurring. When finding the probability of an event occurring, we will use the formula, which is probability of event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over or divided by the number of total outcomes. Take note that after calculating this probability, the answer will need to be in the simplest form. The probability of an event can be expressed as a fraction, percent, or decimal. Also, a simple event where all possible outcomes are equally likely to occur. A good example of, of it is in when tossing a coin. There are two possible outcomes, head or tail. Next, the, probabi uh, the probability of head or tail is equal. Likewise, when you roll a die, you can get any of the six numbers from one to six and the chance of any one of these six numbers is equal to the others. Probability does not tell us exactly what will happen. It is just a guide. We have a property in probability. We have the probability is a number between zero and one, inclusive or included. Next, the probability of a certain event is one, or meaning to say, the event that's sure to happen. And last property, we have the probability of the impossible event is zero or the event that cannot be happened. So to understand, let's take have an example. For our first example, grade 10 Rizal is composed of 20 males and 18 females. The class advisor will facilitate a classroom election to determine the classroom officers. Answer the guide questions to help the section to have a favorable outcome on their election. For our first uh, question, what gender is most likely to win the presidency and why? In the problem given, there are 20 males and 18 females on grade 10 result. The most likely to win the presidency is, ma is male student because the sample space of a male student is greater than the sample space of a female. Second question. Suppose there are two additional female transferees on grade 10, Rizal. Sorry, that is Rizal. What will be the chance that a female student will win as the class president? Since there are two additional females in grade 10 Rizal, the sample space becomes 20. Therefore, the chance is 50% 
that the class president will be a female student. That is our first example. Next, let's proceed for our second example. There are four red balls, two green balls, and six yellow balls inside the box. What is the probability of getting a red ball and a yellow ball? Let's solve first the probability of getting a red ball. So let's use the formula of probability of, an, of the event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by number of total outcomes. The number of red ball in a box is 4. That is why the number of favorable outcomes is also 4. Next, to get the number of total outcomes, get the sum of the given balls in a box. So, we're going to add 4. 4 stands for red, plus 2 stands for the green balls, plus 6 stands for the 6 yellow balls. So, therefore, the probability of getting a red ball is equal to 4 over 12. And to get the lowest term, that is equal to 1 third. And again, in terms of probability, uh, it, it can be expressed as fraction, percent, or decimal. So if we divide 1 divided by 3, it is equal to 0 0.33, or in terms of percent, we just multiply it by 100, we get 33%. So now, we already got the probability of getting a red ball. Now, let's proceed to the probability of getting a yellow ball. Again, let's use the formula of the probability, which is probability of the event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by number of total outcomes. The number of yellow balls in a box is 6. That is why the number of the favorable outcomes is also 6. To get the number of total outcomes, get the sum of the given balls in a box. Again, so we just add 4, stands for the red balls, plus 2, stands for the green balls, plus 6, it stands for the yellow balls. And the probability of getting a yellow ball is 6 over 12. And to get the lowest term, we have 1 half, because we divide 6 and 12 by 6. And after that, uh, we can express one half into decimal or percent. So one divided by two is 0 0.5 or 50 percent. That is our second example. Now, let's proceed to our third example. What is the probability that a letter selected from the word Philippines is the letter I? Again, for our step 1, let's find the favorable outcome. Since the, word, since the word Philippines is composed of three letter I's, therefore the favorable outcome is 3. Next, for our step 2, let's find the size of the sample space. Since the word Philippines is composed of 11 letters, therefore the size of the sample space is 11. Since you all already have the sample space and the favorable outcome of I, we can now find the probability. Again, to find the, prob uh, to find the probability of selecting the letter I from the word Philippines, we have the probability of letter I is equal to 3 over 11. Since 3 over 11 is in simplest form, then it is the final answer. Okay, that is our third example. Next, let's proceed for our fourth example. A day is chosen from a week. Note that we have seven days in a week, which are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So for our first question, let's find the probability of choosing Monday. To find the probability of choosing Monday, you have to determine first the favorable outcomes of choosing Monday. 
So we have the probability of getting ma of man day is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by number of total outcomes. Since we, uh, since we only have seven days in a week and one of the days in a week is Monday, therefore the favorable outcome is one. Next is the number of total outcomes which is seven since there are seven days in a week. So therefore the probability of, get, uh, of, of choosing a Monday is one over seven. Next question, what is the probability of selecting a day that starts with the letter T? So at the given, again the given is a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Since only Tuesday, since Tuesday and Thursday start with letter T, the favorable outcome is 2. To get the probability of selecting a day that starts with letter T, you have to get the number of total outcome which is 7. So uh, therefore, the probability of, uh, of choosing or selecting letter T or selecting a day that starts with letter T, we have 2 over 7. That is our fourth example. Now, Let's proceed to our last example. Pulong Group at High School or PGHS will distribute modules to its students for their printed modular distance learning. The PGHS teachers pack the modules into three groups. The languages that uh, include the Filipino and English, the SciMath, which the subject includes science and mathematics, and the Makabayan, which the, uh, and the subject included here are the AP, TLE, MAPE, and ESP. Now, there are 140 bundles of languages, 160 bundles of SIMAT, and 200 bundles of Makabayan. It happens that a student can only have one bundle per week. What, what is the chance that the learner will have a SIMAT bundle on his first week? So now for our solution, so let's determine the number of favorable outcomes in the situation. And that is the total number of SIMAT bundles. So again, let's apply the, for, the formula. So to get the probability of getting a SIMAT bundle is equal to the total number of SIMAT bundles divided by total number of all subject bundles. The total number of SIMAT bundle is 160 bundles. Next, to determine the total number of the sample space, this is the total number of bundles of modules to be distributed and that is 500. How did we get 500? We add 160 bundles of SIMAT, 200 bundles of Makabayan, and 140 bundles of languages which is equivalent to 500. Now, so plug in the values from step 1 and step 2 in the formula for finding the probability and express the answer in lowest form. So since 160 over 500 has a lowest term, we can divide both sides by 20. So therefore, the probability of getting a Simon bundle on first week is 8 over 25. Thus, the chance that a learner will have SIMAT modules on first week is 8 over 25 or in terms of percent that is equal to 32 percent. I hope you understand our lesson for today which is finding the probability of single event. Thank you for watching.